What do you mean, pastor, being a carrier? You know, uh, in the Old Testament, they talked about the priests. The priests were individuals that one of their duties was to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And um, well, they, they were of the Levite tribe. They were, they were people that from the beginning were, were like destined to, to be priests. They had a job to do. Then, though, as I read this verse in Joshua, we're only looking at one verse this morning, I started to think about our role today. I started to look at the New Testament. What's a New Testament priest look like? What's, what's the duties look like? Are there New Testament priests? So I kind of came across a few things and put, put this picture up really quick just to help us. We're going to dive into it quick. quick. But here is the, the, um, the Ark of the Covenant. And these were priests. This is a picture, an Old Testament picture of possibly the, the people of God going through the desert. And God says, I'm going to be with you. I know that you have some struggles in your life. I know that, you know, you're, you're on a journey in life. But I want to be with you during the whole time. We know that there was like a separation back then. That... Uh, uh, God was a holy God and, and man had sin in their heart and it was hard. It was, it was that God uh, uh, would be with them when there was the blood sacrifice. Today, the scriptures teach us that Christ lives in our hearts. That we are carriers of God. Now what does that mean for you and I? We're talking this morning about being a carrier. We're talking about God living in our lives. Now, I don't know about you, but that's big news. Why is that? You see, at one time, God dwelt in, in a tent, the scriptures teach us. He dwelt in that box. Sorry, Lord, to call it a box. It was a tabernacle, but it was, it was a place. It was the, the, the Ten Commandments were in there. But today the scriptures teach us because of Jesus, because of the tearing of the veil, that he united with mankind. It was his plan from the beginning of kind. You see, God didn't separate himself from man. Man separated himself from God in the garden. God didn't like it, but God devised a plan how to get human beings, how to get our lives back on track. Here's what I want to say to you. I don't know where you're at this morning, but God has a plan to get you back on track. God is not leaving you alone for you to fend for yourself. God's desire is to help you. God's desire is to get you to where you need to be. The children of Israel were wandering uh, from Egypt into the desert. God was in the midst of them. The scriptures teach us that, that this box, sorry, uh, uh, was, went, went along with them. And the presence of God was always with them. God was there to defend them against the enemies. God was there to provide for them and sent manna. Whenever God was in the midst of his people, good things happen. Now what does that have to do with you? I'm here to introduce to you that you got something powerful in your life. I'm here to say to you that God in you is huge. You're fighting life through. You're going through some things. You're trying to get there and you're wondering how it's going to work out. You're trying to get established. You're trying for God to repair some things. You're, you're, you want God to help you. You have some goals. You have a destiny. But it seems like after time after time, something goes wrong. You slip up. You make a mistake. You're under attack. Something goes wrong. And it's hard for you to get your balance. It's hard for you to understand where is this all leading. I'm here to tell you that God in you is greater than all the different things that you're dealing with. You see, God decided... To, to move towards man through his son Jesus. It's called the cross. He broke down the barriers. He 
we that were separated, now we're joined together. And in the New Testament, the scripture teaches us that God now dwells in us. We're talking this morning about being a carrier. Being a carrier? Did you know that you're carrying God within you this morning? Pastor, I, come on. You don't know where I was at last night. You don't know what I've done. I'm a carrier of God? Yes, you are. Yeah, but man, I, I swore. God don't like that. Let me tell you, it's not based on your righteousness. It's based on the righteousness of Christ in you. And I'm here to tell you that the blood of Jesus is greater than anything that you're dealing with this morning. The blood of Jesus is powerful, cleanses you from every sin, cleanses you from every mistake. The blood of Jesus reunited you. Now, what does this all mean for you and I this morning? What does it mean to be a carrier of God? You see, and I'll move on to our text. One time God was there. The priests carried. They carried God. That was a symbol. God in there. The presence of God. And now the scripture teaches that God don't dwell in, in this shell. Though he's here, when we all come together, we bring God and there's an atmosphere. That's, that's God because we're bringing God. The scriptures teaches us that God now dwells in us. Listen, do, now this is Paul. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? It's a new day. Now I'm, 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 I'm on this this morning because I want you to really know who you are and what you got. Because some of you are up against some big things. Some of you got some big dream. Some of you, God has some big plans for you. And you need to know who you are and what you got inside of you in order to get there. Some of you are struggling with an illness. It's by his stripes you're healed this morning. It's God in you that's going to heal you. Now, the Bible says that we come and we lay hands. We anoint with all. Yes. But it's the spirit, it's the presence of God that heals you. Listen, wherever you go this week, whatever you do, you got a powerful force. Did you know that anyone that came close to an enemy, they were struck down. And some people are attacking you. They're foolish. They're fighting against God. Those that are fighting against you are fighting against you. Why? Because God lives in you. Now you say, wow, that's special. You are special. Wow, that's big. You, it is big. You see, God chose to dwell in mankind. He was spirit. Now, there was a, there was, there was a the cross. The veil was torn. Then the day of Pentecost come. And the Holy Spirit, this, the God, which is the Holy Spirit, decided to dwell in mankind. So it's not Jesus in, anymore walking with his 12 disciples, though that's good. It's Jesus dwelling with his disciples. You have God inside you. Now I know I'm going to have to work at this because let me say, tell me something I don't know. Well, I want to spark something into you to let you know how big this is. When you go to work and you don't know how it's going to work out. When you go and you don't know how your future is going to work, you don't know how you're going to pay those bills. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, God in you. Friend, you got everything within you for you to live a successful life. And the enemy is trying to tell you, nah, no, nah, it's not going to work out. Too many faults. You've gone too far. But you know why the enemy is telling you that? Because he screwed up and he, he's, he, he, he can't make it back. But you made it back through the blood of Jesus. God has made you victorious. And though you may sometimes get worn down, though sometimes it's, it's hard. That's why Paul says, you could go ahead and put the scripture up. There's only one verse. That's why Paul says to fan the flame. He's talking about fanning the flame, fanning God within you. What are we doing here this morning? We're fanning the flame. We're making God big again. We're opening up that box. 
What we're doing is we're saying, God, be released in my life. I got a big week. I need a miracle. You're taking God within you into your house. You're taking God within you into any part of your life. That's big. See, wherever God went in, in, in the Old Testament, whenever God went, things happened. As a matter of fact, it said in, in Joshua, the verses before this, it says, listen, God's going to do some great things amongst you. Get ready. Sanctify yourself. Today, God's going to do some great things. Why was that? Because now this is part of the story here. Because God was showing up. Friend, God in you is your miracle. Did you know you can release some things this week? You can tear down some things, some enemy strongholds. You can do some things that no one else could do. Yes, Did you know you're a powerful individual? Jesus. You got God within you. Amen. Now, God, you know, come on, pastor. You got to do better than this. Listen, stay with me. I, I want to talk about being a carrier of God. Oh, what do you mean? I'm one of those people, oh, carrying that thing? Oh, I'm one of those people? You know, they were Levites. Some of the Levites decided, well, uh, uh, they, they were born up in it. It was a tribe. Uh, uh, a, a dad, oh, you're a Levite. You're born. You're my son. You're, uh, I want to be a blacksmith, it's just like today. Some of the Levites said, I don't, uh, it's boring carrying God around. No, 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 no. I don't want to serve God. And I want to go do this. There was... The, the sons of Korah. The, it happened then. It happens today. But today I want to talk about what's it mean? What's it look like to carry God? Is it true that I'm a carrier? You're a carrier of God. Some of you think, well, I, I don't got a lot going for me. My personality's not my best. My, my look's not my best. I went to someone here this morning. I said, man, that haircut's good. It looks good. You know what he said? He didn't miss a beat. He goes, I always look good. I go, yeah. <laughs> Man, you're prideful. No, I'm joking. He, I, I got to be careful now. I want him to come back next week. But listen, no. But you know what I said to him? I said, you're right. Because you know why? He is. Why is that? Because he's really good looking. You know why he's really good looking? Because he has God within him. He has, he has God within him. Listen, I'm not making this up. You are housing God. And I'm going to keep saying it because it's big. You're a carrier. The, the ark, everyone won the ark. Did you know that the enemies, whenever they saw the ark come, they would say, whoa, they have God in the midst of them. I'm, I'm leaving. I, I heard about that ark. They went around. They went around Jericho. They, God always fought their battles. Whenever God was, things showed up. Things happened. Miracles, deliverance. God was fighting their battles. It's the same way with you. And the enemy's goal is to suppress God within you. The enemy's goal is to get you to think, nah, nah. And that's why Paul says to fan the flame. When we get, come together, that's why Jesus says, don't forsake the assembly together. Because what we do on, on, on a day like today, you're a priest. You're no different than me. You're a priest. The, the Bible teaches, we're going to get into that. The Bible teaches that now in the New Testament, we're all priests and kings. What do you mean? We all rule? Kings rule? You're a ruler. Whoa, that's not what my boss called me. Let me tell you something. I don't care. Your boss don't know who you are. You're a ruler. You're destined for great things. You're a priest. You're, you're a, high, a priest was a high calling. The scripture over and over tells us who we are. Why? Because too often we live below our pay grade, who we really are. And that's my thought. That's my goal this morning. Why is that? Because you know what? If you open up that box within you, if you open that up on a, on a Monday when you go into that interview, if you open that up, listen, you'll shine. You know, I've, I've seen you know, people that were handsome or good looking. I got to be careful how I say this. Now I'm married and have lots of kids, but I got to think about this. But you know what? There's good looking women. But did you know that there's really good work looking women when they have Jesus in their heart? Amen. What do I mean? They shine. Man, they got a glow about them. Why? Because God is big. So you say, I don't have the, I don't have the best of looks. Listen, you get Jesus bigger in your life and you will become something that, that, that is bigger than you ever dreamed can happen. Here's what I want to talk about. We're talking about being a carrier. What was being a carrier look like? 
back then. First of all, we see that Joshua said to the priests, they were priests, I've been saying it, to be a carrier, you were a priest. Now, a priest was someone that was born into the skill. It was something that was born into the trade. They were Levites, one of, the, uh, tw one of the tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel. They were born into it. Did you know that you're born into your calling? Listen, I believe from the beginning of time, now we're talking about New Testament, because now you're, God lives in you. So now you're, you're a priest. Did you know I believe from the beginning of time God chose you? I really do. I believe you were chosen. I believe at this moment even, God chose you to be here. Now, I'm, I'm getting more and more to understand this the older I'm getting. I believe that God predestined you from the beginning to be one of his carriers. To be one that where God lives in your heart, your life. God in you. Over and over. I, I remember reading verses not going to go through them all in the New Testament where Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul had a revelation. He knew that, no, it's now a new day. It's God in him. It's God in you. In the Old Testament, they were priests. They were born into it. They were Levites. You're, that's what we call born again. You're, you're a child of God. You're a priest. So what's it mean? Joshua said to the priests, you're, the Bible says it this way. 1 Peter 2.9. He goes on. Well, let, let, me, let me turn to it really quick. He says, you're a priest born unto God. I better find it here really quick. Here we go. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy... Now, this is Peter talking. He says, you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood. He wasn't just talking about to, to Paul. To, he was talking about to the people of God. You're a royal priest, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. You see, God wanted this from the beginning. Satan screwed it up. He, he went in there and he, he, he said, hey, I could do it better. God kicked him out of heaven and God now wanted to reunite his people. He wanted to dwell in their hearts. And that's you this morning. God in you. They were a priest. Did you know you're a priest? I want to move on to the second. You're a priest. Oh, I don't feel it. Uh, I don't care the way you feel. You're a priest. Do you think they felt like it when they woke up every day? You're a priest. You have God in you. Let's go to the second quick thing. Take up the Ark of the Covenant. What's it mean to be a carrier? To be one is they took up the Ark. Did you know that God wants you to take up his cause? Did you know that God wants you to fan the flame and do what he's called you to do? You know, here, these were instructions. Take up the covenant. They were instructions to, to the people. You know, God has given us instructions on how to live our life. And here's what I want to say to you that we have to take up. We have to be people that take up and, and do our part. You know, if you don't see me here, I, I'm joking a little bit, but maybe I'm not. If you don't see me here next week, I'm thinking about going to Hong Kong. Why, Pastor? You're crazy. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm crazy. And, uh, you know, we lived in China a few years. Now, I'm talking about doing the things of God. Now, I'm not going to Hong Kong is not necessarily, for, but, I, but I'm just thinking how God wants to work in our life. You know, I remember in, after Tiananmen Square, I moved my family there. We were there for a few years, ended up getting arrested and uh, for, for sharing the Jesus film on Easter. I resigned my church and I felt, man, there's enough white people around. I saw that on CNN that tank, you know, roll over and, and uh, or against the college kids. And I go, man, I want to be there. I want to help these kids. So we end up teaching in different universities and um, around China, different times, different semesters. And it was one of my great experiences. I loved it. We ended up having five kids there. They only had one kid at the time in China. Now they might be able to have two. You got, a, you got something you could show me really quick. Now, what does this have to do with all this? You know, one time we got arrested and uh, after Tiananmen Square. Now this is a few years later. We went back. One, there's, man, I was really young back then, wasn't I? Now, I'm, I'm saying this. I, I want to get you thinking big. I want you to get you thinking what God is in you. 
You know, one time I went to this uh, hotel. It was, it was a, uh, like a Western hotel, meaning they had a grilled cheese sandwich. So I wanted to get out of the noodles. Damn, now I love noodles, but, but I wanted something different. I went to this hotel and I walked in and, uh, you know, uh, uh, this was in Chengdu, southwest part of China. And I, I, I was teaching in Chengdu University. Science technology, I believe it was, years ago now, so excuse me. But I, I, I said, you know, Lord, we need some Bibles. As I'm walking to myself, I go, Lord, you know, we need some Bibles. We had college kids there, and they didn't allow uh, Bibles and different things like that. And, and I, I said, Lord, we got to give them to people. I only had a few, and I had them out, and they would put them away, the college kids, and they wouldn't give them back. I found out I only had one or two left. And um, I said, we need some Bibles. When I walked in, there was a, another person that came up to me, another white guy. If you've been there, there's not too many white guys. There was like me and nobody else. Out of the blue, some guy came up and said to this, because there, there we go. You know, he said, he goes, do you need some Bibles? Out of the blue. Did you know what, within five minutes of me saying that, I had 2,000 Bibles? Now listen. Now listen. You know, we did, that's that. You know, we did on Christmas, I don't know if it was it, we got Bibles, we loaded it up, and we started handing them out right there because the, one time they were chasing me a little bit, so I put on a Santa Claus uniform. You know, you can't tell a white guy when you put on a Santa Claus uniform. So we, I put on a Santa, and we, we went around our, throughout the alleys. Now, what am I saying all this for? Because God wants to use you. He's called you to take up. Where's our, where's our scripture verse? Go, go back to it really quick. He says, take up the ark. They were destined. Listen, you got a calling. Pastor, is it to, is it to go to China? I didn't say that. But it might be for you to be praying for your family that God would do something great. It may be for you to be a part of this congregation where God uses it to touch the Chicagoland. I'm getting more bolder and bolder. I know we're small. But I'm believing that God's going to make us a powerhouse. What do you mean? I'm believing. I, I don't know. I'm believing that we're going to meet the needs of, of some single mother. I'm believing that one day we're just going to hand a, a single mother a brand new car. I'm believing that God's going to do some great things. Why? If not us, who? If not you, who? You got God inside you. Listen. God's not monkeying around here. He said, take it up. And we got to stir up this thing within us. You got something within you that's powerful. You know what the Holy Spirit was called? It's dunamis, dynamite. That's one of the, the words, the Greek words. You, listen, you got God inside you. And the enemy is trying to, to, oh no, you're nobody, you're this. Why? Because if you understand who you really are, could you imagine if the queen went out there when they were like the illustration? I'm not the queen. No, I'm not the queen. You know what? She, she has to play the role, don't she? Listen, God wants to do something big in your life. Oh, the last thing. What's it mean to be a carrier? To pass on ahead of the people. You know what? You're called to be a leader. The priests at this time passed on ahead of the people. Now, what does that mean for you? The priests were leaders. They, they were different people. They couldn't own property. Some say, forget it. I don't want nothing to do with being a priest then. They couldn't own property. They were dedicated to the Lord. I thought of that. Lord, how do I tie that in? If they can't own property, they, some people got a house. Some people, whatever. You know, listen. No, that's not what we're talking about. Today, now we're, I'm going back and forth from Old Testament to New Testament. You know what? We're sojourners. The things we have, they're just tools God's giving us. We don't know none of it. It's all of God's. How do you like that interpretation? How do you like that new interpretation? So we don't own our house. If you're, if you're a believer, you don't own it anyway. You, you dedicate it to God. God, this is yours. My bank account, it's yours. My kids, they're yours. You don't own anything. Why? We're sojourners in this world. It's, we're passing through. It's all God's. The Bible tells us that it's wood, hay, and stubble. And the only thing that's going to last is what's in heaven. So I'm, I, I, think, I think that plays out for us. I want you to think this week about what you really got. When you're asking for something, God, when you're believing for something, God, picture God inside you. God, give me that thing in the name of Jesus.
God, heal that person in the name of Jesus. And when you're tempted to do something wrong, like we all do, like I do, ask John David. No, you be quiet. Um, um, when we all do, you know what we do? You say, oh, Lord, I end up doing it. I fail you, but I'm glad that you're bigger than my failures. And God within you, you see, it's not about you. It's about God. It's about the Holy Spirit. So what do I mean? And pass ahead of you. Listen, you're, you're, you're called to be the top shelf. Uh, you are. You're called to be the scientist. You're called to own that company. Wow, I'm visiting today. This guy's getting a little, you know, he's going a little far. Listen, the, it was clear. God wanted his people to be the ones that stood out. So it's not on race. I'm, 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 I'm Spanish. It's not on race. No, it's nothing to do with skin color. Oh, I don't have a lot of money. No, it's nothing to do with how much money you have in the bank. For the Bible says, come, you know, listen, it's, it's not that. Well, well, I, I'm smart. I got, I got a PhD. Though that's great, but it's really nothing to do with that. You know why you're going to stand out? You know why you're going to pass everybody up? Now, I want you to study. I want you to get that PhD. But you know why? Because God in you is destined to win. The one that flung the stars in the sky, that's the creator of everything, lives within you. This is big stuff. I know I'm scratching the surface, and it's hard to get a grip in this. It's hard to get excited about this. But oh, I want you to somehow understand what it means to be a carrier. Oh, it's not caring like this anymore. No, that was good. That was for a time. But God was working it out. Jesus came as a baby. He, he knew his plan from the beginning. He brought mankind back together. He cleansed us of our sin. No more. He says, I don't remember your sin no more. As far as the, 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 from the east to the west. I don't remember it. It's not about you. It's about God in you. You're a carrier of God. Now, what's that make you? That makes you rich. Wow, it's true. You're, you're rich in God. You're rich in his favor, his blessings. That's why, listen, listen, the, ru the world don't rule you. You rule the world. You know, oh, I, 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 I was thinking about this. If this tape gets out today, I'm probably going to get arrested. No, but listen, it's true. You, you're the ruler. You're the one that's supposed to set the agenda. You, I don't see it, Pastor. I don't know. I don't, you don't know where I'm going. I, I don't got a lot of time. Well, you know what God did? God used people that were nobody. The fishermen, the people were, were lost. He, what about the, the, the woman at the well? What about all these? God used everyday people and made them somebody. Here's what I want to tell you. You don't have a deficit in your money. You don't have a deficit in your healing. You have everything within you. You know, if you're a little discouraged and thinking, I don't think I could do it. I was not wanting to play this, but let me, let me bring it out of the toolbox. Let me hit the lights really quick. Some of you said, I don't know. Do I have it? Is it within me? Now, this is a little old. I could have got a newer clip. He's still on the stage. Chris is still on the stage. He, he's still singing. But I wanted to pull out the one that moved my heart. Maybe moved your heart before. You say, I don't, I don't speak too good. Moses said that. No, I'm, I'm, I, I have disabilities. I'm the wrong color, the world tells me. Give me a break. You're the right color. You're from the right, born from the right parent. You're, you have the right parents. You've got everything within you. Why? Because it's God in you. If you're doubting where you're at this morning, let me tell you about God in somebody, how God has taken it, and God has transformed all things. He was born. You may have seen as he was born. You got sound, Johnny D? Here. Turn it down a second. Autism, blind, left for dead, really. God came into his heart. Do not tell me that God can't take you places that you never dreamed were possible. Open the eyes of 
telling me that God's not going to use kids up here? You're telling me